interest session of visual chair forex we will be trying to complete the set of using the indicator bull power today is the friday session so once we are done with this we will be good to go for the weekend also so let us now get to the started we will be heading to the visual j forex board which has been developed by the ducoscopy bank asset to make the life of the traders easier we can design and develop the algorithms in a simplistic manner using this platform in uh, prior sessions i had uh, developed the setup so far where the instrument subscription has been done this time around the default instrument is euro usd then the position amount was set at zero to make sure there is no pending or open position on the account prior to the execution of the trade then i got these uh, bull power indicators of the hourly time frame with the look back period of one and two respectively the historical candle data was also brought in to look at the price volatility and then i have taken into consideration various uh, calculations which need to be in place for the execution of the order so for uh, the buy side these calculations were done and uh, now in today's session we will be completing the sell side these are the five conditions which need to be fulfilled for the execution of the buy trade and in this buy limit uh, order block we have uh, one variable missing the order validity which we will define in today's setup in prior session all other uh, variables were defined including the dynamic stop loss and target price so now we head to the J forex chart where i will explain to you the logic behind the execution of the sale trade and also we will look at the appropriate time for the order validity so the trade setup for the sale trade is going to be inverse of the buy setup in a buy trade we needed the bull power values to be on the rise and to be precise the last hours bull power output needed to be twice of the prior hours bull power output or more than that now in case of the sale trade we will need the bull power output value for last hour to be twice of uh, or more than more than twice of the prior bull power output but uh, since these values are in negative it is actually going to demand that uh, it should be less than less than the prior uh, bull power output value so that relation should be kept in mind and uh, uh, with that we also want to make sure that there is a consistent uh, price momentum on the sales side so last hour's closing value should be below the opening value and also the penultimate candles close should also be lower than the opening price so for the last two hours the price action should be indicative of the bearishness in the underlying instrument and that is also going to be reflected in this uh, bull power output value which is going to be in negative territory and that signifies the lack of bullish momentum and uh, for us that will be the opportunity to look for the sell trade now we have to bring in the calculation expression blocks we will be using uh, this uh, same calculation which we had carried out for multiplying the bull power output value for the penultimate hour and uh, this will uh, hold good for the sell side setup as well but for other calculations we will have to start up fresh and uh, invert this uh, calculation as we will be looking for the sale trade when the closing price is below the opening price that means now we will have to deduct the closing price from the opening price to arrive at a desired uh, result info logical mathematical here it is We will need a couple of these. I think five at the minimum. 
Now let us get started. Here we will uh, disconnect this. And uh, for defining of the entry point along with the stop loss, we need to look at the price difference between the closing and the opening price for last hourly candle, which is candle 18. And as I said, its closing value needs to be less than the opening value. So, candle 18's opening value will be the first variable and then we will deduct closing price so it will be a1 minus a2 and this will be cell candle difference okay So whatever is this uh, difference, we will be taking 40% of it. So here is the variable which we had created in the prior session, which has value of 0.4. We will multiply it. A1 into A2. And this will be the difference of the execution of the sale trade. So sell side execution difference. And uh, since there is going to be a limit order, we will have to add to the current price so what we need to do is take this difference and add to the last tick tick price and take last tick tick ask and then we will add it so this will be a1 plus a2 and this will be cell execution point And uh, with these three variables defined, now we can define the stop loss and the take profit as well. And the stop loss is going to be simply the difference between the uh, opening and the closing value in integer data type. So we will have to multiply this by the pip conversion factor to get this value in integer forms so here is this 10 raised to the power 4 this will be a1 into a2 and uh, we will uh, not create the output value here as we need this to be in integer data type so for that we will have to wait till we bring in the pending uh, open order block and also after that only we will create the order validity variable also so one calculation expression will be needed this will be used to generate the value for the take profit and one more will be needed for order validity 
So in advance, I will uh, put it here. And uh, I think we can now join it back. Okay, for the time being, I'm leaving this blank, but we will fill it up as uh, the time arises. Now, let us start with the defining of the conditions which need to be in place for the execution of the sale trade. Logical components we will need. We are going to need five of these. So, in one go, I will take five. and one trading pending open okay and the condition is that we want last hours will power output value to be less than twice of the penultimate hours bull power output. So here this will be less than this calculation. first input less than second input okay let me also take a look on the buy side condition because we want to make sure that uh, these are symmetric okay Now, we will uh, be comparing the last hours uh, closing and opening values and there the requirement is that the candle 18's closing value is less than its opening value. First input less than second input. Oh, I think, uh, yes, this is right. And uh, the same should hold true for the candle 19, which has the look back period of true. Candle 18. And in case of candle 19, the closing value should be less than the opening price. Okay. This means on the price action front, the output is uh, similar to what we are observing in the full power indicators output. And then whenever the price starts to drop, drop below last hour's closing value, we want to execute the order. And for that, we have to simply take uh, candle 18's closing value as the second input in both these e blocks. And here, compare candle 18's close with uh, candle 20 and candle 21's closing values respectively. Candle 21's close should have been above the candle 18's close. And uh, candle 20's close needs to be below the candle 18's close.
Candle 21 has the look back period of 2. So, first input greater than second input. And this should be less. First input less than second input. And then comes the sell limit point and the price is going to be above 40 percent of the difference between the closing and opening price for last hour from last tick tick ask so here is our entry point default instrument will remain as it is euro usd Trade amount, I will change it to 0.1 million. Tips. Now, stop loss and take profit. We need to define it afresh. I have carried out the calculation for the defining of stop loss. Here, I will create a new variable. Sell side stop loss, okay. And its output will be derived from here. And uh, take profit is simply going to be twice of this. And we have the variable in place tbc which has the value of 2 so we will multiply ssl with tbc a1 into a2 into a2 and here this will be our take profit sell side take profit Okay, good to now move on to the validity. So, here this variable needs to be created and uh, looking at the price formation, I think uh, working with the order validity of one hour should be good enough given the fact that we are taking into consideration last two hours. Uh, price action so half of that value should be good enough so we will keep the order valid for one hour and one hour has uh, 3.6 million ticks in it so all we have to do is take last tick tick time and add to it 3.6 million ticks okay so i will create a new variable time and its value is going to be 3.6 million I think I'm right you can point it out in if I'm wrong and uh, if you want to keep the order validity different not one hour all you have to do is uh, multiply this uh, a1 into a2 with the third variable with uh, desired value suppose if you want to keep it valid for one and a half hour then you multiply this uh, two variables with 1.5 and you will get the order validity of 1.5 or uh, if you want to keep it valid for two you multiply it by two uh, not uh, multiplication of this last tick tick cast sorry pardon me uh, we need to multiply this second variable tt with a desired value of our choice as i said if you want to keep it valid for 1.5 r then you multiply tt with 1.5 and then add it to last tick tick time if you want to keep it valid for 2 hours you multiply tt with 2 
and then add it to last tick tick time if you want to keep it valid for half an hour you multiply it by 0 0.5 so i hope you got the point okay so now i will do a1 plus a2 and here also we need to make sure that data type matches so uh, what i will do i will create the variable here and we'll name it order validity time and its output will be derived from this result of the calculation so that looks good to me and we also have to use the same variable for by side there also the order validity of one hour will be used Okay. So with this, I think most of the calculations have been carried out. And now what we need is to place these five conditions here and join it to multiple action. Okay. Okay. So with this, our uh, cell site construction is also complete. And uh, since we are seeing that this uh, color coding is also showing red, pink, so that means the iteration flow is also going through all the way to this execution block. So there is no hiccup in the joining of this block anywhere and uh, with this the setup is complete i hope you have been able to understand the logic behind it and suppose if you want to use it you can uh, use it after uh, testing it on the platform jforex platform on the historical data and there you can figure out the efficacy suppose if you want to carry out some modifications you are always free to do that so from my side, I'm wrapping up the session till uh, the next session. We will be saying goodbye. See you next time. Thank you all for joining in. Do subscribe to the request for webinar channel. Goodbye.